Ciao ragazzi! Hi guys, my name is Evie, in case you don't know me. And today, here is a very special guest. Evie's dad. <laughs> no. Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Leo. Uh, I'm her boyfriend. Uh, is that it? I think so. <laughs> I'm Leo, I'm Evie's boyfriend. <laughs> I'm here to do a video about... what is it? We're going to be talking a bit about British food culture. I've got some special snacks and things as well. Can't wait. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm Italian by the way, that's the whole point of the video. I'm not from the UK. You probably mentioned that. Oh yeah, Leo is uh, Italian. Yes, I am. So Leo has like a slightly different perspective on tea culture and British cake and biscuit culture, which is like a very big institution here. We got pies. We got yeah things like that. Sunday roasts. Sure. You've never had a British Sunday roast. I think I have. Oh yeah. Jimmy made one. Or oh, chef friend. Yeah. What did he roast? Was it a chicken or? Oof. I want to say pork. Oh my god. What, maybe? Or beef? I don't know. Beef is like the really traditional one. It didn't look like chicken. If people are doing like a big roast dinner, they'll get like a big loin of beef. Yeah, something like that. I think it was wrapped with the, um, when you have like the butcher string around it and then you cut it when it's done. Yes. Yeah. And it makes like the little crisscross patterns. Yes. That's some good shit. Apart from that, Britain is not that famous for our savoury foods. However, we do have shit like this. I like that. I've got us a Tesco's finest Victoria sponge cake. How much money was that? Uh, it was like two pounds something. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. However, Leo told me he's never had a Victoria sponge, and I thought if we were talking about British food, this is something you definitely need to have okay. a go at. So it's like a plain sugary buttery sponge. Oh god. <clears throat> like that. And obviously it's better homemade, but Tesco's finest is pretty good. That looks nasty, can I just say that? <laughs> hey! This looks bad. Leo's assertion of every British thing that I try and get him to try. Well, it looks like it's coated in sugar. It is, yes. And it's just like two pieces of bread with, with things like in between. Essentially, yes. It's strawberry jam and cream in the middle. So... How sugary is that? It's very sugary. It's gonna destroy my teeth. Yes. <laughs> All of the snacks I've brought today will destroy your teeth. I'm Great sorry. choice. <laughs> so... In Britain, I don't know if you know about this, uh -huh. but we have this thing called high tea and cream tea. I don't, I don't know what that is. No. Can you have a guess? It's like a special version of a tea? It's like a way to drink tea. Okay. A bit of tea history here. Okay, go ahead. A tea was invented by the Chinese about 5,000 years ago. And then at some point, a Portuguese man brought it to Europe. And then around the, I want to say the 1700s, it became really popular with the upper classes here. Okay. Now it's like the nation's drink because it's so cheap like everyone buys it you can get like a hundred bags of tea for like a pound or something oh it's amazing very strange stuff so a high tea is basically from those kind of times where it was more of an upper class thing okay and it's essentially when you sit with family or friends and you have cups of tea a teapot maybe like some really nice crockery mm -hmm. and like big t cake stands and you have tea and cakes or tea and scones or tea and cakes and sandwiches do people still do that to this day oh god yeah i had friends in high school who would go for a cream tea or a high tea uh, like for their birthday and depending on where you go it can be quite expensive yeah, no, I can imagine that. It just seems weird that someone would ask that for their birthday. I know. Well, we couldn't drink yet, legally, so we had to do something. <laughs> a cream tea is more traditionally tea scones with clotted cream and jam. And then a high tea is more like tea and cake and sandwiches. Sandwiches. That's really strange, because like, I don't get having salty things if you have a tea. I know you do that a lot. You have a soup and you have, you have a tea on the side. You have like a soup sandwich and a tea. I don't, I don't get it. Every time I make Leo a soup and a tea and I bring them both at the same time, he always forgets about one of them. I'm not supposed to have a tea, I'm already having a soup. What the hell am I supposed to do? You shouldn't mix the two. Just give me a Coke or something. This ain't America, boy. Give me an iron brew. <laughs> an iron brew gets you through. That was the slogan for a while. Yeah. The ads were like people in really awkward social situations, which of course is like a British person's hell. Yeah. And then they would have a can of iron brew. <laughs> have you made a bit of iron brew yet? No, actually. God, I really don't want to be part of that. But... What's your opinion of Iron Brew? I taste like shit. Sorry, I don't like Iron Brew. I think it's a bit too sugary. Okay. But to be honest, the only the moment in which I've actually tried it was when someone was really hungover and they told me this would fix everything. 
Oh, it does. Well, I, I don't know because it's too sugary for me to drink, so... Sugar makes Leo's teeth feel weird. <laughs> yeah, I've got really sensitive teeth. But Iron Brew is basically like the soft drink of Scotland. Do you think? Probably, yeah. It's like our Coca-Cola. It's like... also drunk in Russia. Huh? Iron Brew is big in Russia. Really? It's on the Wikipedia page. Ah. Uh... I think we're going a little bit too much Okay, subject. yeah, let's pause as we have our afternoon tea and cake. Mmm. That's a lot. It's so light, it's so moist. It is very light and it is really moist. I do enjoy that. But... Mm, it's good, it's a cake. It's good. See, this to me tastes like, kind of like birthday cake, but a lot lighter. What's in it? Jam and what? Mm. Oh, I said it was strawberry jam. It's actually raspberry and buttercream. Buttercream. I love buttercream. I don't even know what that is. I think it's just like a buttery cream or a creamy butter. Very good. Classic British. You eat way too much butter. It makes everything better. Like I don't, I don't disagree with that. But I think there is a definitely a limit that you should, you should stop yourself at. But like, okay, if you're having a piece of toast with some like ham or cheese on it, you're gonna put butter on first. Right. Otherwise, the toast is just like crumbly and dry. I personally don't. Sandwich is just, you know, you just put the things in it. <gasps> but how do the things stick to the bread? You need the butter. You don't need to stick to the bread. My teeth hurt, by the way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I have some tea. I, I have, I have. I think it's really good, but I think the sugar on top, just like it being covered in sugar. It's too much. Maybe a little bit too much. Actually, it's probably the jam. Well, jam is like 50% sugar. And my mom puts like 50% fruit and 50% sugar. I've had your mom's jam. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so we've just had like a traditional English snack. Okay. This is something that's very traditionally Scottish. A caramel wafer by Tunnocks. This looks like it was produced in 1955. I know. I think that's part of the reason why people love these. Because okay. the packaging hasn't changed. I love wafers. Good. But I do find caramel, well again, really sugary. Going for oh. it. I'll pass like a while. I got strong Scottish jaws, built for the chewing of caramel wafers. What you can also do is just like dip it. I like this. Yeah? This is good. It's more wafer than caramel and chocolate, to be honest. I love wafer. See, if you give somebody a biscuit and a tea, and they don't dip the biscuit in the tea, I'm always like, what are you doing? You know what? Sometimes you don't have to dip, but it is recommended. Put some cheese on a, on a toast, mm -hmm. dip it in a soup. Exactly. And then like as you dip it into the hot soup, the cheese like melts a bit more. That's good. What are your favorite savory things from the UK so far? That's a hard question. Mm. That's a hard question. Um, it was just a bunch of pies, so I just kind of have to like remember which pies. Mm. Yeah. What's the Scottish one that's kind of like closed like a ravioli, like a big ravioli? Closed like a big ravioli? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it, it's flaky. Pastry ravioli is a really good way of putting it. <laughs> It's the only way I can describe it. A pasty. Okay, so I think I get a bit confused because uh -huh. you have pasties and then you have brighties. But basically, you have pasties or pasties, which is just like flaky pastry folded over, almost like a calzone. Sometimes they look like them. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Or sometimes they look like ravioli. <laughs> it's just like if, if I have to think of anything closed into like some kind of like pasta thing. Yeah. It just goes straight to ravioli. But basically, it's flaky pastry on either side, like closed at the edges, yeah. and then you have beef and sometimes potato in the middle, sometimes mince. I think I had it with mince and possibly mushrooms. Oh, that sounds good. Something like that. Evie, when you add it, put a picture of a bridey right here. On my face. Right in front of your face. On my face. Right here. The perfect woman. <laughs> what? I veered off, but basically is <laughs> basically a bridey is a type of pasty made in forfer. Yes. But the east coast of Scotland in particular, we really, really love our like pies and pasties and things. And... You do. Have you tried a Dundee pie yet? What's in that? I don't know. It's very nondescript. It's just like <laughs> meat in a pie. It's, it's very possible. <laughs> Have you had a macaroni cheese pie? I've had one from Tesco. Mm. One of the really small ones when they're discounted. Oh, they're gross. They are, but like, it's good. The best macaroni cheese pies you can get here are if you get them directly from like a butcher or a baker. Oh yeah. You get them hot. Oh yeah. And then sometimes people will take like red sauce and just cover the entire top of it and then sometimes put it in a roll. Red sauce being ketchup? Yes. Okay. And macaroni cheese and ketchup is such a disgusting but somehow okay combination. I've had my boss, who is a millionaire by the way, I've seen him order a... Fuck, what was it? A mac and cheese with lobster bits in it. 
in a what? fancy restaurant. You guys just, just love that stuff. Like a, like lobster shreds. Yeah, but with mac and cheese. All right. The way that we do pasta here, restaurant-wise, it's either like loads and loads and loads of bread sauce, or loads and loads and loads of cheese. That's the three basics of British cuisine. Yeah. Cheese, meat, carbs. Uh, cheese, meat, butter. Yeah, pretty much. Loads and loads of cheddar on top of your lasagna. I've seen a lasagna from a fancy restaurant. It was just swimming in like maybe five different cheeses on top, and there was like a layer of oil this thick. I don't get it. No, me neither. Because that's expensive as well, right? Cheese is expensive. See, I'd understand if it was like blue cheese. Oh. No? What, like lasagna with blue cheese on top? Lasagna with a bunch of parmigiano. Yeah. And then <laughs> you're like, yeah. you're like, okay, this is good, all right? <laughs> and then just like some sprinkles of blue cheese on the top. I think that would taste really good. Sprinkles of blue cheese, maybe, yes. Because I've had that on a pizza and that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Gorgonzola pizza. You want to put the the blue cheese on top of like the, the green lasagna though. Like the pasta's going to be spinach. Mm. Back to the British foods. Yes, <laughs> back to British food. I actually have something else for us to try. Oh, is that coconut? This is also by Tonics. It is coconut, I'm so oh, sorry. Right. And you can probably see the packaging is again quite retro. I wouldn't call it retro. I think it's kind of corny, but look at the f creepy faces on it. Oh, I think they're new. You see that? Ooh. Would you eat that? There you go. But the box it comes in is really retro. I'll go get it. I'm back. I have a guest. Hello. Hello. Dexter's actually a repeat guest on the show. And he's bright. Beautiful specimen. <laughs> he usually like cries until I let him in. He did cry for a little bit. He did. But you just have to ignore him. Yeah. That's part of good parenting. You gotta let them cry sometimes. Sometimes you gotta let them cry. But I've brought the packaging for the snowballs. Very post war kind of stuff. I think that's what it is actually, yeah. Eight pack? Yeah. Did you eat six of these? So, right, let's. Because you're not gonna be able to hear anything no. while you open it. Not to be taken to the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> right, first, is it, this is unrelated to this. It's more of a complaint about everything that has like coconut flakes on it. Oh, okay. The flakes will always fall off. And it just like really... It is already happening. It just makes a mess. Look at that. Oh, come on. There is marshmallow inside. If you, if you squish it, it breaks apart really easily. So these are called snowballs, uh -huh. and as you could probably tell by the package, but they're made by the same people who make the wafers, and also the same people who make Tonic's tea cakes. They're like these, but they have biscuit at the bottom, and they're encased by plain chocolate rather oh, than... Oh, I've had those. This is better than the Tonic tea cakes? Yeah. The Tonic tea cake tea cakes. Eat thirsty. Eat thirsty. <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, something about... He's licking the knife. He's licking the knife. <laughs> You have to stop him from eating chocolate because apparently it will kill him. Stop it! He really wants the cake! It's gonna get so fat. I know. So I was saying, the tonic tea cakes, I've, I've had them. Mm. I think the marshmallow inside is a lot sweeter than this is. I feel like it's not quite as nice to eat. You like these? Yeah, I mean I don't like the amount of marshmallow in it. But I do like the idea of it. If This could be like a thin mm. biscuit, like a Jaffa cake kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Leo, by the way, has not finished any of his snacks. Look at this! So in your opinion, Snowball is better than Tonic's cake, Tea Cakes? I think so, yeah. I think that's fair. I think the Tonic's Tea Cakes, I like them because I grew up being constantly fed them by my family, particularly like my grandma and uh -huh. stuff, and everyone gets them as like a present at Christmas. Really? One year my dad, he was in Edinburgh and he somehow found this shop that did these massive boxes and it was like a 24 pack. And I just like ate them all over the course of the Christmas holidays. <laughs> I was a little chubby, you know? No, of a course. Chubby really teen. <laughs> but yeah, like I think I like them because of that. I think I find it hard because like they're, they're so big and it's like, what do I do with these, you know? Yeah. But you're only like that with sweet things. Everything else, you're like... That's true. There's a few things I've made you this year that you'd never tried before. Yeah. Like, um... You've had, a, like, a thing there for, like, a while. Oops. Oh, thank you. Well, I didn't post. <laughs> what were you saying? Um, there's a few things that I've made you this year that you really, really enjoyed. I made you bangers and mash. Bangers and mash? That is really good. Can you describe what bangers and mash is? Bangers and mash... Mash. Bangers and mash is just sausages and mashed potato with yeah. some <laughs> peas on the side and some gravy on top. Yes, yeah, specifically a lot of gravy. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. It's one of those things that like it sounds very simple when you describe it. 
Well, it is very simple, but like it's good. It doesn't need to be complicated to be good. It's true. All of the best British dishes are simple, I think. <laughs> I think all of the British dishes are simple in general. Yeah. We don't have anything that can rival the lasagna. Or... Lasagna, to be fair, like, lasagna, eh, lasagna is not even that hard. Do you think? It's just harder to find like all the, the single pieces here. I love British food, but like it's like a piece of roast beef with gravy and roast potatoes and some like broccoli or peas or something. Or like bangers and mash with just potatoes and sausages. <laughs> well, a lot, a lot of the food here is... Uh, it's just kind of derived from like pub food, I think, because that's where like most people went to eat. So like that's the food they got developed. Well, that's a history lesson over here. From well, Mr. I mean, it's not, it's not. It's not. It's not like for sure, but like I think that's where it comes from. It's just like kind of cheap stuff that you can do quickly and get a quick profit on it. Also, just like it's cold here. You yeah, need something you... quick. It needs to be comforting. So a lot of meat in it. Uh huh. A lot of meat. A lot of potatoes. Speaking of which, I made you Irish potatoes one time. What was that? It's called champ. I don't remember that. What was it? You get spring onions, lots of them. Right. And you soften them in milk in a pan. You just kind of mildly heat the milk and kind of soften the... Is he eating something? The goblin is in the wardrobe. He's playing with your clothes. Is he? But basically you get a bunch of spring onions, mm -hmm. you put them in a pan with hot milk, yep. and then you heat it all up to soften them. And then you make mashed potato, but you make it like really, really buttery. And you also put some milk through it. Did you make it for me by itself, or did you have something on the side with it? I think I made it with sausages. <laughs> so it was just bangers and mash again. Yeah, but it was like Irish mash. My mum's Irish. I don't, I don't remember like which which bangers and mash that was then. That's okay. But we also have loads of really good homemade soups. We do vichyssoise. I do like all the soups that you do here. I don't really have that many soups. Well, I mean, I didn't have that many soups when I was in Italy. Yeah. My mum makes a few. She makes a vichyssoise. She makes some kind of like pumpkin soup, I want to say. Oh. We don't really end up having that many soups. Whereas here it's like, when it hits a certain point in the year, <laughs> everyone just starts making soups on yeah. mass. <laughs> you know what's really surprising? Your canned soups are actually quite good. They are. We had one yesterday, didn't we? It was good. I don't just feed them canned food all the time, though. <laughs> I do make like... <laughs> Please help. <laughs> Which is your favorite canned soup that you can get here? Oh, I don't know kind of trashy right but there's a what's the brand it's like a strong soup and it's got meat in it it's got like beans or something i showed you it's um it's called like big soup or big something soup. i think it's called literally big soup and that's what i had for like most of my first year in uni then pot noodles <laughs> pot noodles are a completely different subject still a big british institution is the pot noodle <laughs> i'm not joking no i am aware of it it's just kind of like Trashy. You're kind of trashy. So you like your like big chunky canned soups? I love chunky soups. Oh, same. There's one that my mum makes. Oh my god. Dexter! He's eating my coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh! By the way, if there's inconsistency with where the camera is... We should... Stop him. Stop Dexter, him. Just, stop it! Just stop him. <laughs> Get him out. What do you think of uh Because I know ice cream in Italy is quite different. No. I've never had proper Italian ice cream though. I, I've only had British ice cream maybe once or twice. Once we were on a date. Was it the Corolla's place? Yes. Yes. That um, was like particularly good British ice cream though. There's a really good um, gelateria in Ferrara. Yeah. Like it's absolutely fucking amazing ice cream. It's possibly the best one. So that's usually where I used to go like during the summer. Let's go at Christmas. It's that's just not good. Yeah. Oh come on. It's gonna be freezing. Like you're not gonna want ice cream. We can check it out if you want, but I don't think it's a good idea. We will. That one specifically is really soft and really tasty. Is the softness a big part of what's different between the ice creams? <sighs> it's part of it, I think. Yeah. Here you just have, kind of have like normal ice cream. It's just kind of like standard. It's quite firm, right? It's quite firm, yeah. We don't have just cream flavored ice cream. The standard is like vanilla. Oh yeah, so it is. Uh -huh. So it is. For us, the normal version, like what you get, is usually just cream. Which actually sounds really refreshing. I wish we had that. It's pretty good. Pistachio is also a big one. That's nice. How many gelaterias do you have here? All the ones that I've seen are just Italian. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, there's a bunch in like Edinburgh and Glasgow. And there's like a big chocolate company called Thornton's and they'll do ice cream. Oh yeah. And they have like chocolate fountains and stuff. We had an ice cream at Thornton's. Oh we did, in Edinburgh. Yeah. That's the other time we had ice cream. There you go. I think that was pretty good. I don't really remember the ice cream that well. I remember having it, but I don't really remember the, the consistency or taste of it. But I didn't complain, so it has to be. Well the flavours are like the big thing at Thornton's. Yeah. Because they're a chocolate company, they have all kinds of like indulgent... What is the cat doing? 
And we could just close the wardrobe. Well, we could close the wardrobe, but he loves it in there. We're, we're on a tangent of like 20 minutes. Oh my god, I know. So, <laughs> the gelaterias, we have one called Visochis, mm -hmm. just outside Dundee. Visochis? Mm -hmm. I heard of them from a Evie Speaks video. I don't know if you watched them. Uh. We have Visochis. Yeah. Versace's is actually good and it's been ran by an Italian family for like 50 years or yep. something. Then there's a place called Corolla's and the name is kind of deceptive because I don't think it's ran by Italians. But we will often use like Italian names in order to make food sound more legitimate. That's like a big thing here. I've noticed that. I've noticed it. You know, it's alright. Like, I don't mind it. It's a compliment, I guess. Yeah. Corolla's was okay. They fell in the... What do you call it? The pitfall of just having like a shitload of different flavors. Yeah. They went really crazy. They have like a oh, Mars flavor, they have like Nutella mm. flavor. And it's like, you know, sometimes you just need maybe like 10, 12 flavors that are really good. The bigger the menu, the worse the places. Oh god, yeah. Especially with like Indian restaurants and things. Oh, fuck. See, it's really hard to see for like Indian restaurants because like I've been to places that are supposed to be fancy and good, but the food is always just like, oh, well, that's, that's Indian food right there. Maybe we just have too many of them. Do you, you know do what I have, mean? You do have a lot of them. We are obsessed with Indian food. I don't get it. Especially London and things. There's whole streets which are dedicated to having like some of the best curries like in the country. You like the curries that I make? Yeah, I, I've had curry in an Indian restaurant in Italy once and it was possibly the worst experience in my life. After that, I really didn't have any curry until I got I came here. See, that that's crazy because here people are like, you grow up and your parents make like... <sighs> Curries, soups, pasta sauces, and mashed potatoes. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I can see why it's not as popular in Italy, because you have all of this other wonderful food that you can eat instead. See, here's the strange thing. Kebabs are huge in Italy. Really? But like, good kebabs. Not like Scottish kebabs. <laughs> is it just a Scottish kebab thing, or is it like a UK kebab thing? It could be a UK thing, honestly. Okay, in the UK, when you order a kebab, you get it in like a styrofoam box. Yeah. And it's just like really long, flavorless, weirdly discolored strips of kebab. The bread is like kind of under all of it, but it's like really flat and it just ends up being incredibly moist. Yeah, it just becomes like a soggy mess. Yeah, and you can't really eat it like a, like a proper kebab. In Italy, you have more of what I think is similar to like the German kebab. You get it into like a kind of like a like a pita. Yeah, like a sliced bread, and then it's filled with like uh, lettuce, tomatoes, really good meat, and you have those like really small like corner shops like all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we have that. <clears throat> you observe. Yeah, you observe. <laughs> okay, we've been talking for a while. We should wrap this up. Wrap this up. This but before then, the last food we're gonna review are. Cold relief capsules, which are a staple of British cuisine. Yep. I don't know where to go with this. <laughs> you know, we we do have colds pretty much uh, eight months of the year. So. I've had one for like a month and a half. How do you say let's wrap this up in Italian? I have no clue. Allora. Allora. Any final impressions on tea and cake and biscuits and all the wonderful things that British food has to offer? I like cakes. It's all right. Pretty good. I do think you go way overboard with sugar. We have a lot. So like we have tablet, which is pretty much just butter and sugar oh, butter. mixed together. It's so sugary. It is. That's really good though. Why do you not have tablet? You'd already tried it, I guess. That's fair, I guess. But I'll put a picture of tablet. It's just tablet. brown. Right here. Yeah. So British food, not that bad. I like most of it. I like all the... all the... <laughs> it's very distracting, isn't it? Oh, don't. I lost my train of thought completely. I like pasties, mm -hmm. all the flaky, meaty shit. Jesus Christ. I like pasties, I like all the pastry and meat stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. I like the soups. Mm -hmm. Sugary stuff, a bit too strong. Fair. Not a big fan. So, thank you so much for being in my video today. Oh, no worries, pal. Especially... Oh my god, <laughs> bless this little bambino, this little bambino. If you want to see more of Leonardo, please let me know. When I asked if people wanted to see Leo, it was, uh, I think it was Ronald, Ronald Johnson, who yeah. said he wanted to see you. Thank you, Ronald, for helping me persuade Leo to uh, to come on here. If you haven't checked out Ronald's channel, please do. He does like Italian and English content, and he's a really cool guy, so you should check him out. But for now, have a lovely day, guys. I have a lovely day, guys. Do you want to do the outro? What was your outro again? But, but for now, have a lovely. But for now, have a lovely day, guys.
Bachi bachi. Bachi bachi. No, can you do it on your own? <laughs> bachi bachi. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>